Okay, so let's uh, start with the obvious one, of course. Uh, Civis Pakem Parabellum is out now. And uh, well, how are your own thoughts now that you kind of got the reaction from fans and everybody? I mean, so far <clears throat> it's been a it's been a really positive response from from everybody. Um, it's weird to be putting out an album and not having any kind of tour to go with it. Um, so it's not it's not the usual process that we're used to, where we would be we'd basically be on the road by now and we'd be able to see the actual response from people playing new stuff uh, from the stage. So it's uh, that's a little odd and uh, a little frustrating. But um, yeah, man, so far it seems like people are, are pretty stoked about it. They really like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, how is it actually to put an album out in such an unusual time? Um, well, it it almost feels like it. Uh, there was so much. I don't know. It's almost like all the fanfare and the hype disappears. <laughs> you know, because like you normally have a lead into it, and you know that they, again because of the touring coinciding with it, all of that sort of emotional energy and all of that emotional sort of anticipation for it. Um, is all intertwined and if you remove one aspect of that it's quite strange i've never had an album come out when i'm not actually on a tour bus so um it's a new experience but um yeah we just have to roll with the punches you know we just have to kind of figure it out as we go along yeah yeah i uh, i actually uh, i read somewhere that on this album uh some uh, uh personal and political demons are dealt with so uh, well it seems like we are living a bit heightened time regarding politics. So which political demons are you battling? Not not so much political as, as it is social. Um, I, I know somebody at the label thought it was political, but it's it's really for me, um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm dealing more within the music along the lines of things like the deterioration of society, um, the, the lack of community spirit, the self-absorption that comes with all this, this, uh, the, the, the social media platforms where everybody thinks they're very important and their voice should be heard louder and, and above everybody else's. Um, and I think that that's, that's quite dangerous. And then the power that some people have, um, to decide that they don't like somebody else's, uh, uh, you know, opinions, and then they want to destroy their lives. I think that that's that's crazy. I think that there's there's got to you know you got to draw a line somewhere and say, look, man, we can still disagree on things. We can still see the world in a different through different lenses. That doesn't mean we have to hate each other. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand why it, it's it's it, it's it's either you with us or you're against us kind of mentality. There's no, and that's across the spectrum. Uh, there's no there's no acceptance of 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 uh, different ide ideologies and uh, different ideas and you know I have friends from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds and none of us ever have any issues with each other you know what I mean but maybe it's because we're adults so we're not we're not these little spoiled brat teenage you're not teenagers but spoiled brat millennials who think that they that they have the uh, they have all the answers to the the problems of the planet. Um, I just see the, the effect that it has because I don't use social media. The band does, but I don't have my own personal social media accounts because I think that they they just really are a waste of my time. Um, and I see how it affects people's lives. I see how, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna, I, I have a teenage daughter who who is not on the social media so much anymore, but she was for a while. Um, and it was very important to her that she got the right kinds of thumbs ups and likes and, and you know, she had she was she was a minor at the time and there were grown men uh, uh, texting her or, or, or getting hold of her whether whether it was because they found out that she was my daughter or because you know she was just she's just even worse it was just, they were they were texting her while she was a minor so it, it opens the doors to a lot of kind of bad things and it, not only <clears throat> the screaming and yelling from these petulant children but also, you know, the, the, the grown men who are into minor children, uh, you know, that it opens, it, it makes it far more accessible. I just think that there's, there's just, there's not any good thing about it that I can, that I can spot. You know what I mean? I see it for the band side. I see it for, uh, for advertising and information purposes, but I don't see why you need to have a personal one <clears throat> unless you're on a quest for some sort of fame and, 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 uh, and riches because you got a, you know, you got a fat ass and you got a pretty face. And I, I mean, and that doesn't that doesn't contribute to society. Society doesn't need any more pretty faces with with bulbous butts. They need more people that that create art and and and, and write books that are not not you know borderline ridiculous. Um, 
and I think that we, we need we need more people contributing to to the society as a whole and and around them and and, and not just this this uh, sort of self-absorbed selfish quest for for fame and glory you know and I, I think that social media has really bred a lot of people um, especially if you look at the things like the the TikTok and uh, certainly Instagram have been the two major factors in creating <clears throat> multi-millionaires because they, they have entertained, well, they've entertained people, I think, but not, not so much even entertain them. It's just because of the way they look. And then the, <clears throat> the, the, the facade of a life that they present where they say, look, <clears throat> I'm always at the beach. I'm always drinking champagne on the, you know, my life is so perfect. Look, you want to be like me. And so then, envy drives people to follow those people right so, so you got the you got your instagram person envy for, for that person's life drives people to follow that person's life which then drives up the, the fan base which then brings in more money and that's kind of what we what we've devolved into as a society i mean you don't you don't see many kids telling you they want to be brain surgeons anymore they they they, they would much rather just uh, have the fast track to a fat bank account and that's uh, that's really where i'm i'm more focused on politics is a whole different uh different conversation which i'm 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 not willing to have with anybody because i don't i don't feel that it's necessary for anybody to know exactly where i stand on anything and i maybe i don't even know half the time but socially i think i think that there's definitely a, a lot that's wrong and and it's being encouraged um, and it, it you, you know, like I said in the in the song, it's like I'm I'm watching you're watching this cancer spread, man, and it's, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, uh, I I don't like what I'm seeing as far as how it's affecting us as us as humans. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's uh, keep it with uh, if you want peace, prepare for war. So, are there any personal favorites on that album or a song that has a special meaning for you? Um. <clears throat> Well, there's a lot of them that are that are pretty personal. Um, I'd say "Liar," "Failure," um, "Written in Stone." There's 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 a bunch of them that that kind of I like "Wasteland." Um, then there's the the angrier ones. You know, it's funny. I'm I still remember the old working titles for those songs. So I don't even because <laughs> once this, they actually got named, I still I still have a hard time with the, the new names. But <clears throat> those ones are standouts for me. I mean. Failure really was one that I, I was quite proud of lyrically and musically. So, <clears throat> yeah, currently my, my favorites would be Wasteland and Failure, I think, from this album. Okay, and uh, as you said, that many songs are personal. And uh, like uh, my first question was, uh, what are your thoughts right now about the new album? So in general, how much do your feelings change over time about your albums? For example, Disclaimer came out uh, 18 years ago. Yeah, geez, that's crazy. Um, <clears throat> I mean, look, I, I, there's always a place, they, always have, they all have a special place, um, I would say, in my heart. But <clears throat> as, as time goes by, look, well, not even time goes by. <clears throat> you never, f you know, when you've done an album, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever finished one and said, um, Okay, I'm I'm a hundred percent happy with that. You know what I mean? It's never it's never completely well. It's it's and it's not because of something that you feel shouldn't be there, but it's because you you feel something isn't there. So you can't go back and add things to what's already out. I mean, you can ultimately, which I think is is not a route we should take. But you know, I I think like disclaimer, <clears throat> it was it was it was fine. I mean, I, we I liked it when it was remastered. You know, I liked it when it was remixed. Um, because at the time we had it mixed by a guy that was uh, not my favorite mixer. Um, we did Disclaimer 2. We had, we had some of that. Basically, Disclaimer 2 was the remastered version of, of Disclaimer with the extra added eight songs. So I, I still have a soft spot for it. Um, if, if anything, when I listen to those albums, and I don't listen to them often, to be honest, but if I do listen to them, I get, I get quite critical of, of the way it's mixed and where the guitars are in the mixes and, and just how it was put together because um, a couple of producers were, were very focused on making it sound a certain way and not necessarily represent the band accurately. So their objective to begin with was, we want to make this, <clears throat> they were given a directive by the label and they were told, okay, we need these guys to sound more like an alternative band. So then the, pro the producer would do that and he would steer us in that direction with with mixes and with and, you know with uh, guitar tones and and just it, just the general sort of presentation of the music. <clears throat> so 
sorry, I got allergies, man. We got we got bad pollen in this in this <laughs> in the out in the country here. But uh, so yeah, it's, so then you have that sort of you, you know they they put their own spin on it now, and, and I think that would be sometimes when I would like to go back and and sort of remix those albums to be a little bit more guitar heavy and guitar centric than they are. Um, you know, but that's why I started producing the, uh, the albums myself as well, because I, I felt like I could get it to sound closer to what I wanted it to sound like than, uh, than any producer, because I, I'm the, it's, it's in my head and it's the way I, I hear it, you know? Um, so just take out the middleman and I, 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 yeah, I mean, so in a long way, a long roundabout way, I, I still, I still like the, the way it sounds, even though it's been 18 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that the producer might take it to a direction of like alternative rock, but uh, have have like genres uh, ever meant much to you, or what do they mean to you? Like, well, like for for you, what genre is a theater? Well, that, that that's that's an interesting question because currently we would be hard rock or even considered metal if you if you look at things like. Um, the streaming platforms and where they where they rank us and where they put us and which categories, which I, I I don't think makes any sense. I would say hard rock, sure, um, <clears throat> but I don't think we're we're any heavier than than the bands, the alternative bands of the '90s. I don't think that we're we're so crushingly heavy compared to say uh, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden. Even you know, the Soundgarden I think was probably heavier than us at times in their career. So that was alternative then, and it's now now alternative is is you know. Billie Eilish and Lord. I mean, it, it's it's it, there's such a weird, uh, <clears throat> indistinct line between you know Twenty One Pilots, 20, Imagine Dragons. Uh, that's all considered alternative music now. Um, but then, if you're a bigger band like Foo Fighters or Tool you, or Green Day, then you can also cross over to alternative, but you can still get the same kind of love at rock. You know what I mean? It's just that alternative has become quite full of itself, and it, it it's quite it's quite picky and choosy. <clears throat> and, uh, Apparently, uh, the 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 thought of of uh, you know perish the thought that you should have a guitar centric song on on alternative channels because you know that's just not what the audience is into. And then in in, in modern day alternative, <clears throat> it to me is pop music, and it's it's basically it's it's uh it's not the pop kind of like the big pop music like the big diva stuff. It's more the shoegazery type pop stuff. It's more it's more. Um, introspective i think for a lot of the time but it certainly isn't what alternative used to be <clears throat> and they will still funnily enough those alternative channels will still play a nirvana song right next to a a, a lord song and then they'll play you know uh, an alice in chain song just if they forget that they've that they've completely abandoned guitar music and then they'll play you know again they'll do i don't know meg myers or or, or hayley williams or something so <clears throat> it's quite an eclectic but also quite a, an elitist place to be. So I don't know where we fit anymore. I just know that we're a rock band because by definition, uh, we play loud guitars and bass and drums. And and that is traditionally what would, what would comprise rock music. And especially if you add in a lot of distortion. So that that's really where I think we fit. I don't know. I don't know if, what the niche pigeonholes are. I just know that the, uh, the overall category would put us in, in rock and no longer, and not an alternative, which is, which is crazy because even I think even 10 years ago, we would have been considered alternative, but it's just, it's just shifted so fast. And, and uh, a lot of radio stations <clears throat> because of that <clears throat> have flipped their format from rock to alternative. So that, that sort of narrows down the amount of airplay you can get on terrestrial radio, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. 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 I think if you go to uh, your band's uh, Wikipedia page, it says post crunch actually. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> that, that's, 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 like I said, there's plenty of titles. Um, I, I, didn't, I know we definitely didn't fit into new metal, but I, post grunge is that's I mean that's basically considered everything that sounds grungy since Kurt died, which is funny because that then implies that the grunge lived and and died with with Kurt Cobain and nobody else was allowed to 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 you know entertain that style of music. I mean you've got Pearl Jam still going strong, you've got Alice in Chains in their new iteration still going strong. Um, you know, Soundgarden was doing really well up until Chris died. So <clears throat> the, that kind of sound, uh, I mean, you think even the Smashing Pumpkins are still putting out stuff that sounds grungy. So that you can't, are they then considered post-grunge too because Kurt's dead? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, just because you weren't a, 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 an active touring band during the, the grunge music heyday, 
um, you know, but that's just how people like to say things. I mean, I, I think people like to have um, descriptives of, of, of music because let's say, for example, I'll tell you, hey, you got to check out this band and you'll tell me, well, your, your first question will be like, well, who do they sound like? You know what I mean? Because we want the familiarity. We want, we want to know <clears throat> if I tell you I've got a band that I want you to hear that sounds like uh, Kings of Leon, then you will either go, oh, cool, I, I, that sounds awesome. Or I'll go, you go, eh, no, I'm good. I don't like Kings of Leon. You know what I'm saying? And I have nothing against Kings of Leon. Actually, I do like the band. I'm just using them as the, as the example. Um, and that is because as, you know, just our nature, we want to, we, we, as we, if we become curious, we want to be able to immediately identify <clears throat> what about this, 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 this band or this music that you've presented to me is, is, is something that I'm familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we've been talking to bands like big and small and got quite different answers, but from your point of view, how do you think, uh, these times, uh, might change music industry? as a whole? Well, it's the whole thing is an experiment right now. You've got, uh, we, we're releasing an album with no tour and we'll see how that does. Will it, will it, will it, will it increase streams of the music? Will it, will it not have much effect at all? Um, you know, do, do, do we, do we even, <clears throat> do we even need to look into um, these year and a half long, two year long tours? To, to sell albums basically, but actually to make money because that's how bands make money these days because nobody, nobody really buys albums. Um, so I don't know how this affects um, the process. I don't think it really will have much effect to be honest. I think when, when, when we go back to normal, which will happen, I, and there's no way it doesn't, but when it gets back to a point where we can tour actively and put albums out again, it'll have, it'll, nothing will have really changed. I think for the, for the currently you have to get creative but people seem to think that it, it's okay to just to to uh, consume music for as free or as little as possible you know what i mean it's like it, they assume that it's we sit in we, we sit in a studio and three yeah you know, three weeks later we walk out and there's all this music that just magically came out of nowhere and it's and it's completely okay to to uh, not support musicians in any way uh it's you know and we you, you you kind of have to figure out where in the world we fit and i mean we've done a, we did a live stream which we had did did okay um but then you hear from people oh well we're not going to buy it because they're just going to throw it up on youtube it's like well that's that's kind of jaded because we wouldn't do that we wouldn't sell a, a stream for 20 bucks and then after a week go and throw it on youtube for free because that would that would be disingenuous and it would seriously be a really heinous move on the fans that spent the money you know what I mean? So it's, 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 but then, and then you also hear compa complaints about, well, other bands are doing it for free. Sure. We, and we've done some free stuff. We, we, we certainly in the very beginning of the, of the, of the, of the lockdowns, we, we jumped on the, 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 you know, I did some acoustic streams, which were really awkward and, and painful for me to do, but uh, did them, the, the, the boys filmed some stuff around their lives so that we could put out some content. Um, and that kind of stuff is, is, is fine. But now you're talking about six, seven months to, into a lockdown and everybody is starting to feel like they need to start making some money. So it's not fair to say, well, it's now seven months into a lockdown and you guys still expect us to put on a show for, you know, it cost us, it cost us tens of thousands of dollars in production. You know what I mean? It wasn't like we just, we just got up there and we had one cell phone in a garage and we all sort of stood around banging on boxes. It was, we, we did a full production. We had full riot, lighting rig. We had the whole thing. Um, and we, you know, as an experiment, I think it kind of failed because it, 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 the people that enjoyed it loved it. And they, they said it was amazing. But the lack of enthusiasm for basically for, you know, for ticket sales of it, because people assumed that it was not going to be, uh, it was just going to be posted online afterwards. That's kind of, it's kind of crazy. So, in that experiment, we failed, and we know that, that we we probably won't do something like that again. We might do it on a smaller scale, but the the way things change for us the most is is how do we now get out and play some shows, if any shows at all, um, <clears throat> to to you know to 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 generate some revenue, I guess, because um, everyone also forgets that as much as we love being in a band, it's it's still our business and it's still our jobs, and and we've currently been told by the entire planet that we are not essential, <laughs> so. We get to just sit at home and, and, and dwindle. Um, but there, there are options available to us for the current status as, as such, such, such as like drive-in movie theater shows where, where it will just be probably be me and, or, and me and Corey doing it acoustic because there's, there's no way we're going to set a whole band up 
um, and then you know everybody be socially dis. I mean, all this crap that we have to deal with. So there's there's options, and then there's other ways you can do things. But um, I don't see it changing forever. That's what I'm saying. I think I think the changes are, are current and 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 are in the now. But I really don't see how it, it drastically shifts when things go when when the you know when the when the doors open again and, and everyone can go out and actually just breathe fresh air. Um, I don't see any reason why it it it, it, it there's been a, a, a massive lasting change. It's, I think everyone just is being creative right now, and and that that's that's kind of cool and it's and it's interesting because it's all different, but it's 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 not sustainable. Yeah, yeah. Nobody knows the future or when we we get back to normal. But uh, what is the very next thing for you? Like that's uh, certain to happen. Well, I don't really know, man. At this point, all I've got is time on my hands. We've got, we've got, we're looking into, like I said, I'm looking into some acoustic shows, maybe just doing some solo stuff around, keep myself busy and sane. Um, <clears throat> and then we were looking, I mean, I've got time. I might, I might start writing in the next album. I've already got five songs in the, uh, that we recorded for the previous one that, that are for this third album that we with, with, uh, with Concord Records or with Fantasy Records. Because we're kind of doing like this, this, we've got a three record deal that we are, this is the second album. And then we have one more album afterwards. So I could start working on that and get that done. I've been, I've been sort of flirting with the idea of maybe some, some solo stuff, doing a, a solo album. Uh, I'm, I've been thinking about, should I, you know, can I write a book? I'm looking into starting up a couple different, uh, you know, alcohol ventures. Um, I've, I'm looking into some, just, just trying to find different ways to sort of be creative and be actively busy. Because if I don't have something going on mentally, it, it's very easy to just rapidly slip into some sort of uh, depression. You know what I mean? And I, I've been in and out of that for six or seven months now. Um, so I try to keep myself as far away from that as possible by keeping myself as busy as possible. As soon as I, as soon as I'm not busy, uh, I, I uh, can't outrun the thoughts and the, and the, the anxieties and the fears of not being able, of not knowing when I can get back to work. So, um, but as far as, as far as, you know, music, let's, let's just sort of focus on that. I, I'll probably begin right. Well, I've already started, so I'll probably finish writing the next album. Uh, if we don't tour for another year, we might as well record the next album and put that one out by the time, you know, by, by next year, because it feels like, I, I don't feel like I'm going to tour. If we can only start touring in August of next year or September of next year, which is what I, which is what we're hearing might possibly be the case, or even let's say June or July of next year, <clears throat> that means we would have already had a year of touring behind us. So now we'll only do six months of touring. And then we'll have to write a new album anyway, because I don't I don't feel like I want to go out for two years after a year's of, 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 you know post the release of the album. So it, that that's all kind of weird. <clears throat> so I think what will happen is we'll 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 finish another album just to have it and see how see how that goes. But you know the plans would be to tour possibly six months, eight months, maybe a year after we once they tell us we can, and then we'll then we'll sort of reset everything and go back to okay now we're going to do an album then we'll go back out on tour and, and sort of continue as we used to. Okay, yeah, all those ideas actually sound very interesting. So looking forward to all of them or some of them at least. Well, thank you so much for finding time for us and uh, all the best. Oh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it.